Hey everyone, and welcome to a Skill Caps tier list update. With patch 9.0.5 hitting live servers, it's the perfect time to take a look at how the most recent patch notes will be impacting the PvP meta and what classes will be moving up and down based on these changes. Starting with melee, we've got our unranked C tier and B tier all remaining the same. While Outlaw receive a handful of legendary buffs, none of these come close to bringing the spec into relevancy. As for Fury, it's only seen a few changes to its legendaries, none of which have any impact on PvP, which certainly means it won't be moving up in our rankings. What's interesting though is with the upcoming 9.1 PvP talent refresh, we see Fury as a perfect candidate to receive some changes that could make the spec popular in rated PvP once again, specifically the addition of a more Mortal Strike effect. For now though, both specs remain in our unranked tier. As for our C tier, Unholy remains the only melee in this tier, recently moving up thanks to a minor Necrotic Strike buff. However, as the spec has only received a PvE bug fix and an irrelevant legendary buff, we expect Unholy to perform the same in 9.0.5. Moving into our B tier, despite a handful of minor buffs, Assassination Rogues will be staying in this tier. We're seeing them gain an easy way to main Slice and Dice through the new Cut to the Chase passive, alongside a minor buff to Venomous Wounds and their Doomblade Legendary. These changes alone do not warrant moving Assassination up into our A tier. What's interesting though is the newly redesigned Venthyr ability, Flagellation. This change, in conjunction with the Lashing Scar's Conduit, may actually make Rogues a serious contender as a top melee class, as it's looking like their damage output with this cooldown is quite significant and can make a rogue setups during their flagellation window quite deadly. In addition, Necrolord is also being buffed, which is potentially yet another reason why Assassination could become a dominant melee. For now though, we'll be keeping Assassination in our B tier, and revisiting this once enough rogues switch over to Venthyr and Necrolord and we start to see just how well they perform. Continuing to join Assassination Rogues in our B tier are Demon Hunters. While the handful of legendary changes they're receiving aren't meaningful in PvP, the Unbound Chaos buff will at least have a somewhat positive impact on their burst. However, it's not enough to warrant Demon Hunters moving up a tier. Next, we've got Feral Druids who are only getting a couple of legendary changes, leaving them firmly in our A tier as we fully expect to see them shine in their comp of choice, Jungle. And as for Feral's partner in crime, survival hunters are getting a relatively decent buff to their best DPS legendary Latin Poison Injectors. While this buff is somewhat meaningful, it's not significant enough to push survival hunters up into our S tier. Moving on, Frost Death Knights who haven't gotten any changes will be staying put in this tier. With that being said, we feel this spec is still being slept on by the masses and we're surprised more people are not playing Frost DK given just how strong its toolkit is in PvP. The last melee in our A tier might actually come as quite a surprise as we've decided to move Windwalker Monks down into our A tier. While the spec itself has certainly been doing quite well on the ladder and has even seen success in some of the recent AWC tournaments, it's hard to justify keeping it in our melee S tier when you compare it directly to the other melee in our S tier. The spec has also received a handful of bug fixes which was causing it to deal significantly more burst damage than intended, and with these being patched out of the game, one of a Windwalker Monk's biggest strengths has taken a hit. Despite those hot fixes though, a hidden change in 9.0.5 is finally allowing the PvP Trinket versatility bonus to start affecting pets, which will increase the damage of the already super-powered Invoke Shren. So, all things considered, while Windwalker Monks are certainly an exceptional melee and have a lot going for them, they just lack the X factor that the upcoming melee have. And now, we've got the juice, our S tier melees for patch 9.0.5. First up, Arms Warriors remain cemented at the top of this list for all the reasons we've previously stated in our other tier lists. What's making their position here even more concrete is the Battlelord buff, which might become an Arms Warriors legendary of choice. This rework is looking to significantly boost an Arms Warrior already high sustained damage, especially when paired with a mortal combo conduit. They were also set to receive an insane buff to Exploiter, but luckily Blizzard listened to the community's complaints before the patch hit and preemptively hit it with a nerf bat in PvP to stop warriors from getting too out of hand. They're also getting a rework in their Necrolord ability Conqueror's Banner, which might start to see play in some melee cleaves such as Turbo and Red Warrior. Regardless of these buffs and nerfs though, warriors would have remained in our S tier even if they didn't get any changes as they're simply one of if not the best melee right now. Moving on, Red Paladins have been a staple of our S tier throughout Shadowlands, and that's going to remain the same in 9.0.5. The biggest change the spec is seeing is a much needed nerf to the Ringing Clarity Conduit, which will prevent Rets from randomly one-shotting people with their Divine Toll. Despite this nerf hurting lower rated Rets that might have been relying on random one-shots to win games, it ultimately won't have that much impact on Rets that look to set up kills with cross CC and win the game while their target is locked down in a stun. Rets are also getting a 15% buff to final 
final verdict, which will make their already high damage even more threatening for those that choose to use it over the prot legendary. Next, Enhancement Shamans also remain in our S tier, not for any buffs they're seeing but primarily because their strengths remain the same as last patch. The most notable buff we're seeing them get is a 40% increase to Lava Lash damage, which will be a nice boost to their sustained damage but won't really impact how they play or where their burst comes from. Their Legacy of the Frost Witch Legendary is also getting buffed, but this definitely won't take them away from using the super powerful Doom Winds Legendary. And the final melee in our S tier is likely to be very controversial as we're once again bringing rogues back into it. Although they're getting two legendary buffs, neither of these will have any impact on PvP. And much like Assassination moving up into our A tier, Sub is moving up because of the Venthyr rework. Early impressions of the changes to flagellation indicate that Sub will once again be capable of outputting insane amounts of burst in a very small window. What makes this ability so strong though isn't just the fact that it deals a ton of damage now, but because it deals shadow damage. Damage. Rogues will have a much easier time dealing with high armored targets, specifically their current nemesis, Warriors. With the ability to deal magic damage to a play target, it's entirely possible that well executed setups by a rogue will give rogues more frequent access to windows where they can actually land kills on warriors, which up until now have been the reason why sub rogues were moved out of our S tier. And let's be honest, it's not like sub rogues were struggling to gain rating, at least not in threes where the top 10 in Europe has three rogues while NA has one. So although the spec can struggle in twos, the flagellation change and the fact that it already does well in 3s means it's difficult to keep it out of our first 9.0.5 melee S tier. Of course, this is just a first look and things might play out differently, but for now, we definitely expect to see sub rogues appear much more frequently at the top of the ladder. Next up, we're taking a look at our ranged tier list for 9.0.5, but before we do, we'd like to take a moment to tell you all about the incredible guys we've been releasing over at skillcaps.com slash wow lately. Members currently gain access to a handful of guys that walk you through the A to Z of PvP, as we cover everything from dealing damage to setting up kills and surviving while being trained. We've also got weekly releases of arena commentaries for every class, so no matter your skill level, you'll find exactly what you need to take your game to the next level and see immediate results. And the best part? It's completely risk-free. We offer both a 30-day, if you change your mind, and a 6-month money-back guarantee for those who use our site and don't see improvements. You'll also gain premium access to our discord linked in the description where you'll find members of our elite team are available to answer any questions you have about improving in wow pvp so what are you waiting for head on over to skillcaps.com wow straight after this and sign up today Kicking things off in our ranged tier list, we've got our unranked and B tiers remaining the same, starting with Arcane Mages. The spec has only received a minor bug fix to a PvP talent, an irrelevant legendary buff, and a buff to the Venthyr Mage ability, Mirrors of Torment. Sadly, none of these changes are significant enough to have any bearing on how the spec will perform in PvP, leaving it in our unranked tier. Demonology, on the other hand, has been given some damage buffs and also a few legendary buffs, but just like Arcane, none of these are enough to bring the spec into relevance. The only notable changes are for the Warlock class as a whole. However, while these changes are improving another Warlock spec, Demonology won't be moving out of our unranked tier, as there's no reason for any competitive Warlocks to play this spec over Affliction and even Destruction. The only thing to consider is the previously mentioned PvP Trinket set bonus now working on pets, which may end up bringing Demonology Warlock damage high enough to warrant a place in our ranked tier list. This change could easily push it into our B or even A tier, but we'll have to see how the meta plays out out for this to happen, so demo is definitely a spec to keep your eyes on. Moving into our B tier, we have another Warlock spec which also won't be moving. Destruction remains here despite those Warlock buffs we just mentioned simply because the spec itself hasn't seen any significant improvements to the way it deals damage. And although Destro is getting a quality of life change to one of its better legendaries, it's just not enough to push the spec into our A tier. Next, we've got Beast Mastery Hunters that are making a surprise debut in our ranked tier list after some recent changes in the previous patch cycle. The changes which were already live towards the end of 9.0 brought the spec back into the arena scene, and seeing it start to pop up on the ladder and perform to a decent standard has brought it up into our B tier. 9.0.5 isn't as generous to Beast Mastery Hunters though, as the only changes they're getting are a talent and a few legendary changes that will not impact their performance in PvP, leaving them in our B tier. 
Moving into our A tier, we have the only major change with Frost Mages moving up. While two of their legendaries are receiving some noteworthy buffs, we don't necessarily expect many Frost Mages to play with either of these, given how strong Triune Ward is. What is going to make an impact though is the buff to Ice Form and the fix to Icy Propulsion Conduit. These changes are very welcome to the Frost spec and definitely provide Frost Mages with an additional niche strength that the other mage specs lack. What's more important though is the fact that Resto Druids are being buffed, which is an indirect buff to Frost mages given how strong the synergy between these two specs are. Players familiar with the Resto Druid Frost Mage meta in Battle for Azeroth will likely dread hearing this, as there's a strong possibility we're heading back in that direction. And honestly, if Resto Druids become an S tier healer, we may even have to consider pushing Frost Mages into our S tier if their comps end up reigning supreme at the top of the ladder. For now though, we'll be keeping Frost Mages in our A tier and seeing how the meta plays out. Next, we have a spec that is a strong contender to move up into our S tier, but will be staying in our A tier for the time being. As we mentioned earlier, the Warlock class as a whole is receiving some buffs, the most notable of which is the Demon Armor buff. It's no secret that Affliction was one of the easiest specs in the game for melee, to kill whenever they could connect to them. And given that, this was also an Affliction Warlock's biggest weakness. This is certainly a change that all Affliction Warlocks are very excited for. And when you pair this buff up with the Divine Vision nerf to Holy Paladins, we won't be surprised if Affliction Warlocks start to see a lot more play at the top of the ladder. So much like Frost, this is one to keep your eyes on, as depending on how the demon armor buff actually plays out, we may end up falling victim to our warlock overlords once again. Next up, Marksmanship remains in our A tier, only seeing a handful of legendary buffs. And although the Surging Shots one could play a pivotal role in PvP, specifically with MM Hunter Burst, the lack of other changes means there's no way we'll see Marksmanship Hunters creep up into our S tier. Last up, we've got our S tier which remains exactly the same as last time, starting with Fire Mages who remain as an incredible spec with insane burst potential and unrivaled control as a caster. Fire Mages are also seeing a buff to the Venthyr Covenant ability, Mirrors of Torment, although we do not see this being enough of a buff to warrant Mages switching back to Venthyr as Night Fae will almost certainly remain the best Covenant. The handful of legendary buffs they're getting also won't have any impact in PvP, as Mages will continue to be one of the hardest casters to kill thanks to Triune Ward. Next we've got Shadow Priests, who are also getting a handful of legendary changes which are irrelevant in PvP, and no other significant buffs or nerfs which ultimately keeps the spec safe in our S tier. There is however one hidden change to Shadow Priests, which is a nerf to the Void Origins PvP talent. Previously when interrupting a Shadow Priest that casts Void Eruption while specced into Void Origins, they would be able to immediately recast Void Eruption. This change will make it harder for Shadow Priests to deal with being trained by two melee. However, for now we don't expect this to be enough of a nerf to push Shadow Priests down into our A tier. Moving on, Balanced Druids are receiving next to no changes, and so just like Shadow Priests won't be moving out of our S tier. It's worth noting that despite the nerfs to Convoke last patch, Night Fae remains a competitive Covenant choice for Balanced Druids, while Kyrian is also considered as a very optimal selection for your Covenant. And with neither Covenant seeing any changes in 9.0.5, it's unlikely we'll see players favor one Covenant over the other. However, we have noticed a theme with higher rated Balanced Druids in Arena tending to stick to Kyrian. Last up in our range tier list are Elemental Shamans who despite receiving a few changes will definitely be staying in our S tier. The increase to Earth Shock damage and decrease to Lava Burst damage means Elemental Shamans will be moving slightly closer to the playstyle they had in Battle for Azeroth, with Lava Burst not being as threatening while Earth Shock will start to be a much more impactful spell. The Venthyr Shaman ability Chain Harvest has also been buffed for Elemental Shamans, but given how clunky it is to use due to the long cast time, we don't expect to see Venthyr Elemental become more prominent, especially when you consider the strength of Necrolord. However, it might make those enhancement shamans who play Elemental as an off-spec feel a little better. And finally, Elemental has also received a legendary buff, but much like most of the other legendaries we've covered so far, this one is not relevant in PvP. So to conclude, Elemental shamans aren't really changing too much. They'll still deal crazy damage with Stormkeeper, and even though their lava bursts won't hit as hard, Earth Shock will pack a bigger punch, leaving the spec in our S tier as we move into 9.0.5. Finally, we've reached our healer tier list which has seen the most activity, starting with Miss Weavers moving up into our B tier from C. First, a handful of improvement to one of their biggest weaknesses, mana. 
Through a reduction to the mana cost of Vivify and Renewing Mist, and a buff to their legendary of choice Clouded Focus, Mistweaver should have an easier time keeping up with the pace of damage in Shadowlands. More importantly though, that Divine Vision nerf to Holy Paladins we touched on earlier will likely open up the meta, and give another healer the opportunity to be the Shadow Priest and Affliction Warlock counter. And given that Mistweavers previously had that role in both Legion and Battle for Azeroth, there's a chance we might see Mistweavers brought to more arenas to help deal with the influx of Affliction Warlocks and Shadow Priests in the upcoming 9.0.5 meta, thanks to their Healing Sphere PvP talent. Despite the mana improvements though, Mistweavers lack any other meaningful changes, which will likely keep them alone in our B tier throughout 9.0.5 as what will be considered the worst healer. And moving into what's actually going to be our highest tier, Holy Paladins are dropping down from their S tier throne into our A tier with the other healers. Throughout 9.0, Holy Paladins received several nerfs, mostly to their mana as the spec was consistently outperforming every other healer in almost every aspect of PvP. 9.0.5 continues the trend of nerfing Paladins, and we feel this most recent round of nerfs are finally enough to bring them in line with the other healers. First, we have another, although minor, nerf to Holy Paladin mana, with Holy Shock's mana cost being hit. And although the change to Holy Shock's mana cost is not too significant, it's the PvP specific changes to Divine Vision and Ultimate Sacrifice that are going to have the biggest impact on Holy Paladins. First, Divine Vision no longer providing Shadow Resistance Aura means the Holy Paladins will no longer be a soft counter to both Affliction Warlocks and Shadow Priests, and will make their life much harder when facing up against these casters. And while that change alone would probably have been enough to see Holy Paladins start to struggle in some matchups, the additional Ultimate Sacrifice nerf will make the cooldown much less reliable, as any crowd control players can get onto the Paladin during sack will make the cooldown significantly weaker, allowing teams to ride their momentum on the target that was low, as Holy Paladins will have much less time to top their low health teammates. Altogether, these changes will definitely lower the strength of the spec. However, it's mostly the mechanics behind the spec itself that makes it so strong, including talents like Awakening, which make it incredibly hard to consistently generate momentum against Holy Paladins. So despite these notable nerfs, the spec will remain strong, and instead of causing it to become much less used, it will just open up the meta for other healers to see more play. Next, Restal Shamans are not really seeing any notable changes. The only one really worth considering is the Lava Burst nerf which will slightly reduce a Shaman's offensive presence but really isn't going to change how the spec is played at all. They're also getting a couple legendary changes, neither of which are going to impact PvP, so we'll likely see Restal Shamans maintain their current spot in the meta. And much like Restal Shamans, this Priests are only getting some legendary buffs which will have no impact on PvP, leaving them untouched in our A tier. And although Disc still remains a strong spec, it's the next healer in this list that may actually cause Disc to start to see less representation on the ladder. We've recently seen a huge surge in top healing priests switching over to Holy as their healing spec of choice, not due to any specific buffs but mostly as players gave the spec more time and started to discover its niche within this meta. The fast pacing of Shadowlands PvP means that stuns are one of the most impactful crowd controls in the game, and unlike Disc, their Holy counterpart is able to spec into censure to contribute in their team skill attempts alongside a handful of other perks that spec brings which we recently covered in our sleeper OP specs video. And although they've received a couple buffs this patch in the form of a divine hymn buff and the improvement of a handful of legendaries, none of these have any impact on the spec's current strength in PvP, and it's instead just the discovery of the fact that it was good all along that brings holy priests up into our A tier. And the final spec we'll be looking at today are Resto Druids who have moved from B into our A tier. Now as we mentioned earlier, it's entirely possible that Resto Druids will become our S tier healer, but that's entirely dependent on how the meta evolves and if the game slows down. While it may not happen this season, it's entirely possible that Season 2 of Shadowlands is where Restoration Druids will take back their crown as the one true healer. For now though, the buffs to their healing throughput are definitely enough to bring them back into one of the most relevant healers in PvP. As the moment Resto Druid healing overtimes are strong enough to outheal damage, the spec becomes incredibly strong as it will have all the time it needs to focus on playing offensive and get crowd control with its team. It's also worth noting that the Holy Paladin nerfs we've already mentioned a couple couple times may open up the opportunity for another healer to become the primary partner for mages, and there's no better candidate than Resto Druids, especially with Frost Mages being buffed. So much like a few of the other specs we've mentioned so far, this is going to be one to keep your eyes on, but for now, we're certain they deserve a place in our A tier. Alright everyone, that about does it for our first look at our 9.0.5 best specs tier list. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.